and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. Today we're going to be talking about Jeffree Star's skincare line that he just launched. We're going to be discussing the ingredients in these products as well as the marketing which includes his launch video and my opinions on those and the products as a whole based on those things. I was very up in the air if I was going to make a video about this but enough of you on my community tab poll that I put up there showed interest in this. We're going to go through these products in the order that they're displayed on the website. That's going to be different than the order that he spoke about them in his video, but I am going to reference things that he has mentioned about these products in that launch video. So first off, we're going to talk about the moisturizer. The way that he had described this line and this product specifically is that it's full of active ingredients. I think this term is being used fairly loosely in the marketing of the skincare line. Aside from drug products like sunscreen, acne medications, in which your active ingredient is only allowed to be a very specific set of ingredients and at specific percentages. In my opinion, in cosmetics, the way that I think of active ingredients are things that are not essential to that product. You can have a moisturizer that doesn't have things that target discoloration or brightening. If you added those things in there, I would think of those as active ingredients or a face wash that has exfoliants in there. So those are things that are added to give that specific product an extra benefit, if that makes sense. That's more what I think of actives. And I bring this up because of what the skincare line labels as an active. So for instance, niacinamide, I would agree with that. That targets discoloration. It is something that's added to this product that gives it an extra benefit over the typical function of a moisturizer, which is obviously to moisturize. So this moisturizer also lists squalene. Moisturizers are made up of humectants, emollients, and occlusive, and all these are typical things in a moisturizer to moisturize. Squalene would fall in that emollient category, so I wouldn't really call that an active ingredient. And we'll see a little bit later when he mentions active ingredients in the cleanser, actual ingredients that are doing the cleansing aren't mentioned. And those are essential to obviously something being a cleanser, but they aren't mentioned as an active. So it's just kind of very confusing. You can let me know down below what you think a definition or what you would consider to be active ingredients. And I also wanted to mention that the terminology that is being used on the website in terms of what these active ingredients do is also very risky, in my opinion, going towards drug claims. If you look at the language used on the packaging, selling other kinds of products, it will almost always say reduce the appearance of wrinkles, reduce the appearance of redness, things like that. And here for the squalene, he specifically says reduces fine lines and wrinkles, and that language is used in a couple other products too. These kind of phrases can be misinterpreted as a drug claim. Drug claims come from physical changing of the skin or treating disease or preventing disease of the skin. You saying the appearance of something pretty much saves you from stepping into that risky zone. The amount of niacinamide in here doesn't look bad. The amount is said to be 5%. This seems reasonable to me for a moisturizer. You will see things like serums that have a higher percentage at like 10%, but because of the nature of this product, you're probably putting more of it on your skin in terms of weight. So I don't want to critique the amount of niacinamide in here because it is formula dependent and this seems like a reasonable amount for the type of product that it is. That being said, a lot of this line has niacinamide in these products. It's very unlikely that the niacinamide as an ingredient in these products is going to cause any issues through using any one of these products individually. But the way this was marketed is that this is a core line of products. It was described to use them all together. So if you were to use multiple products at niacinamide on a daily basis, twice a day for some of these products, you may be risking using too much and that could lead to irritation. That's a problem we've been having a lot lately is people have been using a lot of these active type of ingredients and it's led to a lot of skin irritation. People are using exfoliants in multiple products and this compromises your skin barrier and can actually make your skin worse. This is why I ended up having to pull back my skincare routine and I don't have any of those type of ingredients in there. I had a very basic cleanser and a very basic moisturizer and then I started to add things like a vitamin C serum or a glycolic acid toner 
into my routine once I knew that my skin barrier was in good shape. For me, I don't like to use moisturizers with those kind of active ingredients because I use it morning and night. I don't like to rotate through a lot of them. I like to use up the whole thing. Other than that, in terms of looking at the ingredients of this product, there are quite a few extracts in there. And he does mention early on in his video that there's no scents that come from, that are from fake chemicals is how he phrases it. I can't remember exactly what he says. I'll put the little clip in here. Now with this entire line, there are no like fake added fragrances. Everything is extracts and real. So you're not getting any weird fake harsh chemicals. I would think because he's been in this industry so long that he wouldn't use language like that, but here we are. These kind of extracts and oils and things can actually be more irritating. For instance, having like something like apple extract are made of a ton of different compounds, any of which you can be allergic to. Just because something doesn't have a synthetic fragrance in there doesn't mean it can't be irritating. And also he does mention that this product and a lot of these products are dermatologist tested. There's no legal definition for this aside from you have to have a dermatologist involved somehow. Dermatologist tested doesn't necessarily have to do with the efficacy of this. It could be something as small as a dermatologist is signing off that the ingredient should be okay and shouldn't be irritating or maybe using on a few people and a dermatologist signs off that it didn't irritate those people. So that's why I don't hold a lot of weight to that term at all. Now we're gonna move on to the makeup removing balm. This product has a spatula in it, which he says is for sanitary purposes. I think he probably should have included this in the moisturizer as well. Even if you have clean hands, you think you have clean hands, they may not be 100% clean, and if you're gonna include it for one product, you should probably include it for the other product as well. So in this product, jojoba oil is mentioned as being a active ingredient. It's only at 1%, it's not the ingredient in here that's doing most of the work. You have things like ethyl hexyl palmitate, that's gonna help remove a lot of those oily ingredients. You also have polyglycerol 4 caprate and polyglycerol 6 dicaprate. These are gonna be your surfactants. These are gonna help get that sunscreen off, your makeup off, and be able to rinse them away. These are really the hard workers of this formula. These ingredients seem pretty straightforward, a lot of emollients to help remove your makeup and whatnot. Based on the nature of this product and because it is full of emollients, it's usually not the concern that cleansing balms are too stripping. In fact, if anything, I find that typically I feel too oily after using a cleansing balm. I could see using the phrase non-stripping more appropriate for a cleanser. And that's gonna bring me into the next product. And this is the Strawberry Water Clarifying Cleanser. After using the makeup removing balm, it's your skin is not supposed to feel stripped. And But then he mentions that you should be using this cleanser, the Strawberry Clarifying Cleanser afterwards, because that cleansing balm's not gonna remove everything from your pores but then doesn't mention this product being non-stripping. It's kind of irrelevant if that balm was non-stripping if you're gonna have to use a cleanser anyway and it would be more important that that cleanser is non-stripping. So in terms of the active ingredients that he mentions, there's niacinamide, again, there's glycolic and lactic acid for a combined 1% and there's willow bark extract at 0.1%. So willow bark extract contains salicin, which can be converted into salicylic acid, which of course is gonna help exfoliate. The actual surfactant ingredients in here that are doing the actual cleansing are PEG7, glycerol cocoate, and Palaxamer 184. These are gonna be what actually does remove all that extra stuff off of your skin. So you're not leaving these on very long. With the percentage of exfoliants in here, you should get very mild exfoliation. But, but again, using this every day, twice a day probably. If you do use any sort of cleanser that has these kind of exfoliating ingredients in there, if your skin does start to feel slightly irritated, I would start alternating cleansers with something else, reduce it to maybe a couple of days a week you're using this cleanser. This is called clarifying cleanser, so it is in the name. This product doesn't look like a bad product to me, as long as you're not overdoing it to a point to where you're causing your skin irritation. 
So now we're going to move on to the strawberry facial toner. He does mention that this is an alcohol free toner. So I don't necessarily have an issue with that. He called it alcohol free, but what our old school definition of what toners used to be like an astringent almost is kind of not really exist anymore. You have hydrating toners, which just have a lot of humectants ingredients to help draw moisture to the skin. You have exfoliating toners with specific ingredients to exfoliate. There are some toners that are just supposed to add some beneficial ingredients to your skin and there are still some that do try to help remove any excess things your cleanser might have missed. So toners don't really have one function anymore and it's really only those extra cleansing types of toners that would even have alcohol in it. Other than that, most of them I don't even think include alcohol anymore or are supposed to have that kind of skin tightening, drying kind of property to it. And I think that this specific product, the toner, would be the most beneficial product for you out of this line if you want to incorporate niacinamide into your routine. Unlike a moisturizer or a cleanser, you're, you don't need to use it twice a day. You don't need to use it every day. You can use it a couple times a week or more or less as you feel that your skin needs. So you can control when you are getting this niacinamide incorporated into your skincare routine. There's also witch hazel in here if you do still want that skin tightening kind of effect. And there are humectants in here which should give you some slight hydration. If your goal is to incorporate niacinamide, I feel like this would be the product. So now we'll move on to the hydrating eye cream. This one does have a metal tip on there. And I must say, those definitely feel very, very nice when you are applying an eye cream. So I will give the packaging that kudos to it. And then as I started to look at the ingredients list, I started to see all these asterisks on there. And in the asterisk, it says that these are incidental ingredients, that they are not part of the INCI name for the raw material blend. So this is very um, confusing to me. Incidentals are actually ingredients that don't need to get mentioned on your ingredients list. Part of the reason why they may not be in kind of seems like what could be here. They were part of a raw material blend to help preserve it or something like that. And then when it got added to the formula, because it was such a low amount that those ingredients are not significant enough to be added to the final products ingredients list. A lot of those ingredients with the asterisk are things like phenoxyethanol, ethyl hexoglycerin, t-butyl alcohol. Those are all preservatives. So I'm just kind of concerned what the preservative system is in here. I do see caprylo-glycol, which is typically used in preservative blends, but usually phenoxyethanol is the big main preservative. So maybe it was not only a part of the formula, but also an incidental, is that you need preservatives, especially in this formula, because it does have water and humectant type of ingredients. So I hope that there is a significant amount of preservatives in here. One ingredient that they do mention in here is intentional. The INCI name for that is Hydrolyzed Manahot Excellent Tuber Extract. So the way that this compound works is that it anchors itself and spreads itself on the skin's surface and forms a viscoelastic film is how it's described on a raw material supplier website. And this happens very quickly. And this helps promote lifting and smoothing effects and you can actually feel this working. But, and if it is what I'm thinking of, it does have a very quick effect. You can almost visibly see it happening before your eyes. So this product seems like it would be most useful for people during the day, unless you have someone to impress after you're doing your skincare routine at night. There's also vitamin C in here at 1%. Personally, I feel like that's probably on the lower side of vitamin C. It probably has a little bit of benefit, but I don't believe that the vitamin C at this percentage is probably contributing very much to the performance of this product as a whole. I think it's really this intentional that's contributing to how this product performs, along with the hydrating humectants and that kind of thing, but that intentional is really the key ingredient that I would look at here. I think this eye cream would be most beneficial also for more mature users. If you're like less than 25, Honestly, I don't think this eye cream's really gonna help you that much because you don't really have a lot for it to lift. Next, we're gonna move on to the lip mask. So for the lip mask, this line is claiming that it has a lot of beneficial active ingredients. He does not mention them in the video, and I think there is a reason for that. There are three trademarked raw material blends in here, and those are Line Fill, Max Lip, and Volulip. I'm gonna leave links to those three 
raw material blends down below if you want to look more into those yourself but he does not mention those in the video and I think it's because at least one of these when I looked it up said you had to get written permission to use it in your marketing so aside from mentioning it on the product page itself I think that's why he didn't mention it in the video I don't really have a lot more to say about this lip mask it looks like all the other lip masks that I've seen out there maybe these raw material blends are super beneficial but I haven't heard anything about these compounds being like miracle compounds at all. So it just looks like a typical lip mask. So I don't really have a lot to say about that one. So now we're gonna move on to the last product, which is the Glow Face Mist. So this is another one of those products that doesn't look very out of the ordinary. Like any mist product, it has humectants like butylene glycol. Those are gonna be great because that's gonna help keep your skin hydrated, which is gonna give you an instantly better feeling. It also has a little bit of oil in there to act as an emollient, so nothing really special. But there was one thing that I did wanna point out on this ingredients, and that it was that fragrance was listed on here. I didn't hear him mention this in the video. Fragrance is considered a trade secret, and therefore companies don't have to disclose what the ingredients are in that fragrance, which could be synthetic source, it could be natural source. So I thought that was really weird because if we remember what he said earlier. There are no like fake added fragrances. Everything is extracts and real. No like, fake added fragrances. Would fragrance not be in that category or shouldn't he have mentioned that there is the fragrance ingredient in here. This seems to contradict what he was saying initially. Overall for this line, I wasn't gonna buy any of these products anyway. I think a couple of these products, like the toner and possibly the cleanser with infrequent use could be okay. A couple products did seem interesting. The eye cream seems like it could be good for certain people. The toner seems like it could be good if you wanna incorporate the niacinamide the, and potentially the cleanser if someone's looking for a more exfoliating cleanser. The other products I just didn't really have an interest in. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. If you did, let me know what you learned down in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos like this. And with that, I will see you in my next video.